Hey everybody, welcome back to Lunar 2 Eternal Blue Complete, where last time we went through Zulan Mountains and fought the Missing Link. And pretty much saved the entire town of Zulan because it's no longer under a blizzard. And we found Maria along the snow sprout grass, but she doesn't really have her memory. So we kind of just left Zulan and now we're in Moribia. But we're here to see Master Lun. Well, this is Moribia. The city is governed by Master Lun, Sensei the Blue Dragon Fist. Lun has constructed a dojo here, and many people have signed up to learn the way of the fist. Welcome to the Port of Moribia. We're proud to have Master Lun as our governor and protector. You chose the perfect time to visit Moribia because Master Lun is currently at his dojo. You might as well take that down that wanted poster. Now that Master Lun is back, no criminals will dare to enter our city. Oh, about that, we technically are quote unquote criminals. Phew, now that I'm finished doing the dishes from lunch, then it's time to make dinner. It's a lot of work to make enough food for all the students at Master Lun's dojo. I don't mind preparing the meals so much. There's only one chore that I despise. And what's that? Doing laundry. I guarantee you won't enjoy hand washing the sweaty loincloths of 30 men. I suppose. Althina's guard will pay 10,000 to anyone who captures Lucia the Destroyer, dead or alive. 10,000 silver? Do you know how much goodies I can buy with that much money? Lamina, please don't tell me that you sell us owl owl for a measly 10,000 silver. If you guys would give me 10,000 silver, I wouldn't have to consider turning you in. I hope that reward doesn't get any higher. Lamina's going to have a nervous breakdown. So, let's check out the shops. We have a weapon store over here. New weapons. We have the Bastard Sword, which is definitely better, but our magic defense goes a little bit lower. Still, worth it. You, on the other hand, are also worth it. Give Jean a little bit more damage as well. So, might as well equip that, and then equip that. And then sell our hand-me-downs, because you can't really do anything with them. You can sell these as well. Um, did I not equip that? I did not equip that. What did I just sell, by the way? <laughs> did I just sell something on, uh, it's fine. I got the weapons. I can figure it out what I sold. Let's go over here. People are flocking to Moribia from all over the continent to enroll in Master Lun's dojo. Our ports, inns, and taverns are bustling with more people than I've ever seen. Maybe I should start a business of my own. How about a Master Lun souvenir shop? It could work? Master Lun has taken an active role as one of our four heroes of Althena's Chosen. There are those in Moribia who feel that Master Lun doesn't do enough to be considered a hero. But it's because of his presence in Moribia that we live in peace. And for that, he is a hero to me. I mean, he is teaching a lot of people karate, so it could be helpful. Do you guys know where to find the underground sewers? My boss said to check them out. Uh, that, I wasn't supposed to tell you that. What, you don't know? Sheesh, thanks for wasting my time. We have an armor shop right up here, but if we check down this corner here, we have a life jewel, which is pretty much money at this point if I want to sell it. Let's see what this armor shop has. So glad you decided to come to my shop today. Let's see what we got. We have a steel bracelet, which is better, but I am running out of money. Thankfully, these aren't as expensive, so I'd buy one of these. I definitely want that, so let's equip what I just bought so bam and then a little bit of uh, bam there we go sell you and you and you there we go and now i should be able to buy a couple more things here so let's see silver armor i can't afford that so pop that on there yes and then i'll do a little bit of boop there we go i'll sell you and then i should be able to afford these. I'm going to give you one of these. You can also take one of them too. So there we go. And unfortunately, I can't afford that unless I sell one of you. <laughs> there we go. And now I can afford it. So we could do that. I give him the plate armor if I want to, but uh, I'm going to do that instead. Okay, so we'll do this. Boop, boop. There we go. You can equip one of those and you can equip one of those. Let's see what else do I have that I need to make sure I'm all good here. Yep, that ought to do it. So we can sell these, don't need them anymore, and both of these. There we go. And we are all pretty much topped off. I still have some money, but I'm pretty much mostly topped off on everything I could buy. And we have this. Welcome to the Ramus' store. Take your time and please let me know if you need any help. Oh, Lamina, are you here to visit with Ramus? He's been working day and night to turn this shop around. He says that he won't rest until you're satisfied with the amount of money he's making. Huh? Why would I care about how much money he's making? I mean, don't you realize how Ramus feels? Surely he can't be that insensitive. Uh, never mind. I shouldn't have said anything. Hope I don't get in trouble. When I was tending the store last night, I heard the sound of crying children from behind the wall. I'm so scared that I can't even go to the bathroom by myself at night. <laughs> that sounds weird. 
My family has worked in Raymond's store for generations. This shop is rich with tradition and history. It's rumored that a Dragon Master once shopped here. Ramirez has been working very hard, and he's always trying a new scheme to attract business. But nothing's been working. It won't be much longer before he's forced to close the doors. I know you're tired of hearing me apologize, Junior, but let me once again say how sorry I am. Because of my stupidity that you had to work so hard. Hello, Grandpa. This is Ramus' grandfather. He was a drinking, gambling playboy when he was younger. Kind of like Ronfar. Anyway, it's because of him that Ramus' shop is almost bankrupt. Oh, hello, my lovely little girl. Did you bring me some of that fine wine from Vane? If you're looking for Junior, you're sitting right over there. Yeah, up there, over there. He calls Ramus Junior because every owner of the shop has had the name Ramus. Weird, huh? I think Junior is really Ramus the 16th or 17th or something. Every time you visit us, Miss Lamina, you're more beautiful than before. Oh, Grandpa, you don't have to state the obvious, but thank you anyway. Lamina, you are the epitome of self-confidence. Miss Lamina is most beautiful in person, of course. But this bromide makes for a fine substitute. <laughs> ah, you better give that to me right now, Grandpa! No, please don't take it away. We got bromide number three. Where did you get this from, you dirty old man? Don't lie, or I'll turn you into a pig. Not that you aren't one already. I was cleaning up the store, and I found it hidden under Junior's money safe. I've been searching the store for more of them ever since, but I haven't found any. Yet. Well, we'll keep that in mind. Welcome to Ramus' store. I'm Ramus, the owner. Please favor us with your business. Hi, Ramus. So how's your little business going? Are you seeing any profits yet? Not at all, Amina. Rubio is trapped in a recession, and the future looks bleak. Sometimes I feel like I'm just delaying the inevitable. Maybe it's time to declare bankruptcy. Are you serious, Ramus? I always knew that a student will surpass a teacher. I just didn't know what would happen so soon. Lamina's teacher? He's not my magic teacher, silly. Ramus' family has never been able to use magic. But they've always had a keen sense of how to make money. So it's because of this chunky monkey's teachings that you're such a money grubber? Rude. I just haven't been able to think of any money-making schemes. Do you have any ideas, Lamina? None that I share with you, Ramus. Or don't you remember our little contest? We're going to see if you can turn the shop around before I restore the guild to greatness. And unfortunately, that's all that we have for that little bit of story. So what we can do is if we head up here and then just randomly click on these barrels. It's, it's weird, but you just got to tap around. Hey, hero, what's that? You find another bromide, like immediately. That's pretty much all we can really do in this store. So you might as well just get out of here for now. Either way, we have a little bit more of this town to visit. So why don't we talk around? Step right up, step right in. Witness the run, wonders of sale and Ramus' the store. We sell everything from common goods to the most unusual items in the whole world. We uh, might need to issue a rain check for certain items, but please come in anyway. I can't find it. What's the matter, sweetheart? Did you lose something? No, that's not it. I can't find the sewers anywhere, and I've looked everywhere. Say, youngsters, did you know that Maruvi was named after the great and powerful Master Mel? Uh, no, it wasn't. But, okay. <laughs> Mel was one of the four heroes who took part in a battle with the fate of the world at stake. In the later years, Mel retired from the adventuring life and became the governor of Moribia. That's technically true, but he did not find Moribia. Master Mel had one daughter. She bore a remarkable resemblance to her mother, who died tragically. And she had a bold, cheerful spirit of her father. Like her father, she took part in a great battle to save the world. And like her father, she won. Jessica fled alongside Dragmaster Alex on the historic day. It's good to know that people still actually know about that, because this is many, many years later. And I mean many. When I was a wee lad, Maribio was a place where goods from all over the world were traded. The streets were lined with rows of giant shops and lavish homes. Everyone in Maribio prospered. Ramus' shop was the most prosperous of them all. That was a long time ago, I'm afraid. When I was a child, Ramus' store was much larger than it is now. Back then, the owner was a guy named Grant. He had a horrible reputation and no business sense. Yeah, way, way back then. Son Ramus the Six is trying to salvage his family business, but it won't be easy. I'm pulling for him. Well, hopefully. Yeah, Moribia is not as big of a city compared to the first game. I can't really go to the left over here and see more shops and such. It's kind of, it's not really walled off, but I guess there's just like a closed gate or something. They say Ramus' store is the most popular shop in the world, but that was long ago. It used to be Ramus' outlet in every city, but they're all out of business now. The store in Moribio is the only one left, and it probably won't be open much longer. So apparently, Ramus' stores were so successful, he was essentially the Walgreens of this universe. On every single street corner. What are you doing in here? I don't want any of whatever you're selling. Oh, you're not a salesman? Well then, why didn't you knock first? I mean, really? Every time I turn around, there's someone at my door asking for a contribution to the Chosen. They're trying to sell me a useless piece of junk that's supposed to improve the quality of my life. 
you know, the bigger this town gets, the more our nutcases crawl out of the woodwork. Yeah. At least somebody's aware that people just walk into people's houses in RPGs. So let's just go across over here. Hi. Yeah, I am Lon, master of the blue dragon fist. Don't make me hurt you. Cower before me, dung eaters. I am Red Priestess Mari, the most powerful mage in this land. Ha, I'm the White Knight Leo. Halt in the name of the gods or I shall flail your rank bottom. Whenever we play the four heroes, the fattest kid has to be Black Wizard Gorgon. I hate it when I get stuck playing as Gorgon. I know I'm fat, but I'm not that fat. Sadly, I can't really speak to that kid. I mean, I can't really tell if you're Sprite, but it is what it is, I guess. My daddy is a salesman who goes all over the world and brings me lots of presents. He's even gone to Dalton. I bet you never gone that far away, have you? I mean, that's technically a whole other game, but yeah, that's... Yep. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> but of all those mean bands that Taven speak, my dad can't come home and bring me presents. Well, I can't help you there. Of all the people in the city, you think someone will know about the sewers? I'm getting tired of bugging everyone I see and getting the same lame answer. I don't want to ask anyone else, but Nal will get mad at me if I don't keep trying. Another kid I can't help. Well, well at least we can check out on here. On to Nal, Maribia's most famous leader was Master Mel, one of the four heroes. I think Master Lun is a better leader than Mel ever was. He's made Maribia safe again. Before lunch showed up, I tell you, this city was going to the pot. Maybe has flourished since the day it was found. No, it wasn't. <laughs> that is a translation error. It wasn't founded by Helmel. It was governed by him. But until recently, it was really dangerous here. I was afraid to walk down the street. Master Lon and his followers had made Marubia safe again. I love him for what he's done. Yeah, that was a mistranslation. I was pretty much kept in since Lunar 1. But yeah, it, it's still weird. And there's a sign here I wish I could read, but I can't. Hello. Hello there. Let's see, you have standard items, but now they sell starlights for 2000. We can finally buy these, but they cost a lot of money, so we're probably not going to be buying them for quite some time. Which is kind of bad because I did waste a decent chunk of them in the last dungeon, which, whoops. I have a store I can't go into, and we have a tavern. Did I talk to you? Hello, have you heard of the tale of Master Mel, the very first leader of Maribia? Technically, met his wife. At the time, he was known as Helmel, the notorious sea pirate. He fell in love with the daughter of the Maribian Admiral, who loved him just as strongly. They knew that theirs was a forbidden love, but neither of them cared. Mel was sneaking to her home at night, if only the light of Blue Star to guide him. Maribians believe that the Blue Star has a magic power, the power to bring lovers together. We derive that belief from the story of Master Mel. So there I was, taking care of some business at the carnival, as we merchants tend to do. When I see this bizarre thing take off into the air of a bunch of crazy bastards inside. <laughs> as soon as I get back to the carnival, I plan to take a ride on that contraption myself. We're not crazy, and we're not that bad word you just used. You're the one who's crazy if you want to ride that thing after watching us do it. Come on in and have a seat at the Crossroads Tavern. Is this your first visit, Maribia? Whether you're a long-time local or first-time tourist, the Crossroads will make you feel at home. We have an array of food and drink from all over the world. And you'll be happy to know that we also have a kid's menu. Have fun, little ones. We're not that young. Quite frankly, I would love to have a flying machine like the one at the carnival. I could fly around the world and take care of my business in a day instead of a month. Well, I think you're the crazy one here, buddy. The entire city's talking about the banners of Taven Speak. Um, well, technically only two people now. Where did they come from? Where did they go? Where did they come from, Kai and I, Joe? Why have they chosen Taven's Peak as their base of operations? And who's the masked man that seems to be in charge of them? Masked man? Tell me everything you heard about him. Everything I heard of was told to me by a merchant at the table right over there. Why not ask him? I heard the talk that the banners of the Taven's Peak has blocked the road to Vane. Fact is said that they even steal kids who stray near their base. How twisted is that? But I draw comfort from the fact that those heartless thieves are about to be crushed. Master Lun has returned from Anagulia, and he's surely going to punish them for their crimes. When I ain't working, I'm drinking, and I ain't had a job in years. Now come here and drink with me. I see you decided upon a bottle of Red Dragon Flame to destroy your liver. Good choice. You should take a swig, Ruby. They say anyone who drinks it will turn into a red dragon. And wouldn't you love to be a grown-up like the rest of us? <laughs> Are you serious, Ronfar? I know I shouldn't have drank, Hero, but this is a special case. Bottoms up. Okay, so when do I turn into a red dragon? Ah! You know, my eyebrows are just starting to grow back after the last time you did that to me. I know that I'm searching for a beautiful princess who rides on the red dragon. 
and I know that I'm a handsome prince whose destiny is to marry her and rule a nation with her. I don't remember anything else, but I digress. I'm off to find my princess bride. Ha! Ah, come to me, white dragon. Our search begins now. Ah, uh, isn't this the part where the white dragon shows up? Apparently, the white dragon is as confused as I am. I know you'll find me soon. And then, I shall find the princess and start my new life with her. Okay, buddy. Uh, you think you had a little too many there. Customer at the counter says he's a minstrel. He wanders the world, taking the myths and legends he hears on his travels. And turning them to beautiful songs. Why don't you ask him to sing one for you? His voice isn't very good, and neither is mine right now. And neither are his lyrics, honestly. But he plays a mean loop. The stories of the present are the myths and legends of the future. But what about the stories of the past? Are they based on truth, or are they fairy tales? Heroes that save the world, goddesses who beauties with blinding, ferocious dragons. Are those stories mere fiction and fantasy? The dreams of the sleeping storyteller? The stories are true. When I hear about the goddess of Athena or the dragon master, I know they're real. Makes like a feeling in my heart. Do you indeed? I admire a man with the courage to have faith in what he feels if I cannot see. Let's take a look at this item and see how it makes you feel. I think you will feel wonderful. I mean, I guess. What's this? It's a picture of Jessica de Alkirk, the mother of Moravia. She's the heroine of many legendary tales. I want you to have it as a gift from one believer to another. Would you like to hear one of my songs about Jessica? I've read many of them over the years. Of all the heroic tales I've heard, Jessica's adventures are some of the most exciting. Um, well give me a second and I'll see what I can do. A dragon's roar echoes on the wind. A night's light sparkles in the darkness. The clash of swords echoes over the earth. The blue star sparkles in the sky. Come and listen to the tales of courageous heroes Painted by ancient legend I honestly could have done better, but my voice is shot There aren't many customers here today And the one who are here don't want to hear a song And the one? And the ones you mean I think that's a typo My guess is that everyone is afraid to travel near Tavid's Peak because of the bandits I love to perform for you, but I'm going to save my voice until more customers come in I mean, technically I just sang, but not as good as I could have Either way Check over here. Are you traveling through Moribia? Well, you won't be able to pass Taven's Peak. A group of bandits have built a hideout somewhere up there, and they also blocked the roads. These merchants can't get to Moribia. Their supply of salted salian cactus is dangerously low. I love the fact that I'm just following along this story of the salian cactus that's being shipped. It's only food my grandma will eat while I'm moaning about it. You wouldn't happen to have any of it, would you? I'll pay any price you're asking for it. Imagine if you actually had to do like a trading quest for that. This must be your first time in Moravia, because I can tell you're looking at everything. And there's plenty to look at, because Moravia is the biggest city in the world. There's nothing that can't be found in this city, if you know where to look. <laughs> it's like I'm always singing to myself. Moravia is the place to be, Moravia is the place for me. But lastly, we have this place over here. And just making sure I didn't miss anybody, I'm pretty sure I talked to you. Greetings, fellow travelers. I'm a wealthy merchant, as you can tell by my expensive attire. I have the Moravia to stock up on exotic items, which I'll sell on distant lands for a tiny profit. You should buy more seafood than anything else. It's the most popular and the most profitable. I do an especially brisk business in Caterina Shark Fins. They make a very tasty soup. Or so I'm told. So I like the fact that a lot of the merchants are like buying stuff and then selling it in another place. I mean, that's technically what merchants do, but it's just kind of neat hearing about it. Ah, oh, welcome. You stand before Master Lund's world famous dojo. You're in luck. Lund is usually very busy, but he's in the dojo today training new students. I want to speak with him before he leaves for Pentagulia. You better hurry. Master Lun's dojo welcomes all, even those who believe that their fighting techniques are superior. But if you truly desire to fight Master Lun, you better make sure that your will is up to date. But yeah, I wasted enough time around here. Let's go see Master Lun. Come on, show me your strength. Remember the vow you took when you begged me to take you in. Yeah! Kid! You gave your miserable lives to me. I must make something of you, but you must concentrate. Your fist is an extension of yourself. Channel the power. is pathetic if you think you stand a chance against any opponent with that clumsy display you'll be dead in a moment you must try harder hmm? oh, oh. 
I did not realize that we had visitors. I apologize for this pathetic lack of skill you had to endure watching. Yes, well, my name is Jean. We have come to you because you are known to be the karate expert. Master Lun, we desperately need your help. <laughs> well, well, perhaps you are expecting too much of me. I am merely a servant of the art of karate. <laughs> but enough talking here. It's quite noisy in the great dojo. Please, come this way. Master Lun is a born warrior, and he shows no mercy upon those who would break the law. That's why I'm surprised he hasn't done anything to those bandits rampaging in your tavern speak. He must be contemplating the best way to bring them to justice. I'm hope I'm ma I hope I'm asked to help him. The name of this city was taken from the name of the great warrior named Master Mel. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Master Lun has been called the reincarnation of Master Mel, and I understand the comparison. Both of them were virtuous, kind, strong men, and both of them are charismatic leaders. I wish Master Mel was still alive. He and Lun would have one hell of a sparring match, I bet. Hey, what's up? You know, this city has always been governed by great heroes. First guy in charge was Helmel. No, he did not find Moravia. And even named it after himself. Cool, huh? Because it would be like Melibia or whatever if it was named after him. Every ruler of Moravia has lived in this mansion, but when Lund took charge of the city, he turned the mansion into a dojo. I guess he didn't care about luxurious living quarters, huh? Me? I would have added on some rooms onto the mansion. One spot can never be too fancy. I mean, I guess. I mean, it is kind of nice to have like a dojo of sorts. I still is in his private chambers at the moment. Do you need to speak with him? Yeah, I will, but first, let me just kind of wander around a little bit. <laughs> you got quite a few people to talk to in here. This is a dojo of Massalon, one of the four heroes. Have you come to learn from the best? He's upstairs sending into some important business, but I'm sure he'll speak with you briefly. Massalon is always very busy, but he makes time to speak with his new students. Aha! I just signed up with this dojo, and they're going to show me how to kick butt. Haha! He said I have to do chores and stuff until I can prove I'm ready for combat. Haha! I'll show them that I'm even better at the Blue Dragon Fist than Lun. Haha, <laughs> that'd be cool. Eh, I mean, just signed up, so maybe if you get started. Oof, I just realized I'm not going to be the next Master Lun. I mean, I can hardly breathe. Oof, all I did was try a flying kick. Frankly, I suck. Just remember cardio, my man. Master Lun fights with the strength and sweetness of an angry god. First time I saw him in the sparring match, I aspired to be like him someday. Welcome to Lun's Dojo. I am Lun's personal assistant, and I answer only to the Master. I have earned his trust over many years and been the loser in many sparring matches between us. Are you here to enroll in our school and embrace the way of the Blue Dragon Fist? Come at an excellent time as Master Lun is available to speak with new recruits. Hiya! Kinda makes you scared hearing me scream like that, doesn't it? That's it, watch your opponent's movements and strike when he's unprepared, do you understand? Hmm? Do we have business with me? I'm sorry, but I can't speak to you until these training exercises are complete. If you'll excuse me. Yeah, yeah, ha, oh, ouch, man, that really hurt. Wasn't that supposed to hurt because it did? I told you I'm not going to take it easy on you today. I'll be prepared to receive a severe beating because I'm very prepared to give it to you. Are you new recruits? Your first lesson is not interrupt the teacher during a training lesson. If you, if I don't keep an eye on these beginners, they're liable to put each other's eyes out. Attack me now! Good, good, you're able to improvise an attack with great speed. Some say Lon was born to fight. Others say he was bullied around as a kid. Now he tries to help others avoid the same fate. I think he just likes to beat the snot out of people. I mean, karate is a kind of ouchy ouch, depending on how good you are at it. Is this something I can help you with? Oh, you want to know why I'm standing here? Chances of anyone daring to steal a weapon from Lund's dojo are very slim. I've been stationed here to guard them, just in case. It's a very boring job, I assure you. And thank you. It would be so funny if he would actually react to that. He's just like, I'm watching so nobody steals weapons that go down. Dagger! And just walk away. But yeah, we also have a basement too, so let's see what's going on down here. A whole lot of nothing. When I joined this dojo, I was hoping to study the Blue Dragon Fist and be just like Master Lun. What I wasn't expecting was to be placed in charge of guarding this crappy storage area. And the only thing crappy here is this low-res image on this wooden door. I, it's a sprite, but it just looks like it's stretched in the weirdest way. I don't know why, it's just a thing. Either way, that's pretty much everybody down here, so we might as well, you know, uh, go upstairs and do what we came here to do? Let's talk to Master Lun finally. Before I do that, let's just check around here. Nothing, nothing, nothing. All right, then. Good to go. Now then, Jean, you say that you and your friends need my help, but you haven't said why. 
Master Lun, have you heard of the martial art called the Shadow Dragon Fist? I'm afraid I've never heard of it, Jean. And I've heard of every martial art. Are you sure that... Yes, Lun, it's real. It's the martial art of pain, darkness, and death. It's the art of assassin. An assassin's art? How horrible! The man who teaches this art is a coward who hides behind a mask. His name is unknown. He kidnaps helpless children. He breaks their fragile minds, and he teaches them to kill. His victims become mindless soldiers, willing to do anything for their masked master. Willing to kill in the name of the Shadow Dragon Cult. How sickening. How horrible. How do you know so much of this cult, Gene? Did they kidnap someone close to you? Not quite, Master Lun. They kidnapped me. What? Oh, Gene! It can't be true, Gene! You're just making all this up to get Lun to help us, aren't you? No, Ruby. It's true. It's all true. I still have nightmares. And I still remember what happened on that day I escaped. You're a liar! You lied since the beginning! The Shadow Fist isn't an art of strength! It's an art of death, smeared in the blood of the innocent! Have you already forgotten my teachings, Gene? Strength means nothing unless it's wielded. Shadow Dragon Fist is not the art of death, it's the art of ultimate strength. Shut up! Your words are lies! And your heart is black! I won't do you bidding any longer! Why do you run from us, Gene? Wherever you may go, you will take our teachings with you. Your soul now thirsts for blood, and your body aches to quench it. Come to me, Jean. Come to me and accept your destiny within the cult of the Shadow Dragon. Ah! Are you angry, Jean? Are you angry enough to strike at me? Stand up and use what I have taught you. Allow the anger to infiltrate your soul. I... I won't fight you. I won't use the Shadow Dragon Fist. You don't control me anymore. Not true, Jean. I control your life, and I summon your death. I was found near death at the bottom of the cliff by a traveling caravan. They brought me back from the brink of death and took me in as one of their own. Since that day, I've been trying to forget my past, to block it completely out of my mind. But now I know I can't live like that anymore. I have to confront it, no matter how much it hurts. I have to find the masked man and make sure he doesn't do to any other children what he did to me. Jean. Jean, thank you for bringing this Shadow Dragon call to my attention. I cannot forgive anyone who would chain helpless children in the ways of such evil. Your story has reminded me of rumors which were recently brought to my attention. A group of bandits have been robbing travelers in the vicinity of Taven's Peak, and your description of the Shadow Dragon cult matches the descriptions of the bandits. I thought I was just a band of petty thieves, but it seems I was wrong. Jean, I want to ask a favor. Go to Taven's Peak and search for a link between the bandits and the Shadow Dragon cult. Once you locate their hideout, I will lead an attack upon it. Know this, I'll bring them to justice, one way or another. I never thought you would do so much for us. I'll do all that you have requested of me. Thank you, Master Lun. The Taven speak we go, because as you know, rumors in all RPGs tend to be true most of the time. We heard about Taven's Peak constantly, a lot of times actually in this town. So that is our next destination. So we might as well stock up if we needed to stock up. I've already done so, so I'm good to go. Posterity check. And we're ready to go. A lot of people in this town, I must say. A lot of people. A lot of people. Alright, so that was Moribia. So we are to head to Tabin's Peak and deal with some bandits. But before that, we have some bromides to look at. So I might as well just check them out while we're here. We'll start off with Jessica's bromide. Land Ho. All right, and now we have Lamina's Bromide 2, Seaside Stroll. And lastly, Lamina's Bromide 3, Midnight Appraisal. And that is the provides. So next time I Azure play is more Lunar 2 Eternal Blue Complete. We're going to head to Taven's Peak and see about dealing with those bandits. I'll see you all then.